Hello, welcome. Take a moment, try this problem out, and then press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, so they these questions, there's a lot to unpack, right? So don't feel like you need to look at it and quickly know the answer right away, but let's read through it. Which statement regarding the graphs of the functions below is untrue? So I'm going to just I'm going to underline this in red because I always forget that. I'm trying to find something that's false. Okay, and I'm just going to glance. We have a trig function. Okay, the amplitude is 3. The coefficient of x is 2, so the frequency is 2 over 2 pi. All right, we've got a log graph with a base 2. We've got an absolute value function, and we've got a cubic polynomial here because x is being multiplied 3 times. Okay, so choice 1, we want to find something that's untrue. f of x and j of x have a maximum y value of 3. Now, you could plug both of these, these into the calculator, f of x j of x and find a, a maximum by hitting second trace. And I'll show you how to do that right now, but you don't need to, and I'll explain why. So here, I'm not going to do both. I'll just show one. Let's clear off any old equations. I press y equals this button up here, and now I can enter 3 times the sine of 2x. I go to mode, and I make sure I'm in radians. OK, I am. I go to zoom. And I make sure I'm in trig, choice 7, and then I see my sine curve. Now you could find a relative maximum, right? These are all the highest point you can see. And sine waves will do that unless there's some kind of um, function that controls the amplitude. If the amplitude, this number in the front, that's a distance from the midline, um, is a constant number, you can expect a, a constant set of maximums and minimums. So we go to second. And we go to trace, and we go to choice four, maximum. This is one way to do it. I go to the left, a little bit to the left, enter the right of that one of those maximums, hit enter, and then I guess, okay, it's about there, and I get my maximum at x equals 0 0.7853, three, so on. The maximum height is three. You can also see that in the table here. Um, I have a weird, let me just go to plus. And let's say, um, go on pi radians, pi over, sorry, 2. So here, and if we go to, oops, let's go to this table set. And I'll start at 0. And I want to go by increments. I'll keep the increments from here. So <laughs> I, I clearly chose a bad increment. I chose pi over 2. I thought that would be nice, but let me, maybe pi over 4 pi divided by 4, sorry about that, go to table. Here you can see um, those maximums of 3, negative 3, 3, negative 3, and so on and so forth. But you don't need to do that because the this number is the, called the amplitude, and the amplitude tells you the distance from the midline of the sine wave to its peak, right? So if you had a sine wave, it's just going along, right? The midline is the line right at the center of the sine wave, and the amplitude is the distance from that midline to the peak and to the minimum. And that those numbers should be equal. It doesn't look like that right here, sorry, because my sketch is terrible. Uh, but the midline equation is zero right here. Because if you have y equals a sine of bx plus c, whatever number you have over here, that's your midline. There's no number written over here, so that the midline is just zero. In other words, you look at this, the midline is zero, amplitude's three, the highest point it's got to reach is 3. So that's true. And then if I cancel this out right here, we're going to look at j of x next. Now here, I, you can quickly kind of think about the general parameters of this equation and say, oh yeah, the, the, the maximum is 3 on that as well. Um, but I'll show you how to do it in the calculator as a backup. Absolute, the, the parent function for absolute value is like this. right? This is y equals the absolute value of x. When you put a negative sign in front of the absolute value sign, you're inverting the output of your function. And for, for any function you do that, whether it's log or sine, you reflect it over the y-axis. So I know I've got, right, this is y equals the opposite of the absolute value of x. Now all of this stuff in here I'm actually going to ignore. It could be really complicated stuff in there, but that's all horizontal transformations. Anything in the input of a function so uh, for, for log, anything here, for sine, anything here, um, anything on the input of the function only changes it horizontally. So we're worried about the maximum, that's the maximum height. So we don't need to even worry about the horizontal stuff. 
but this tells me that I move up three. So yeah, some horizontal stuff happens to it. Uh, it does move over uh, by a certain amount and get, and get crunched by a factor of a fourth, right? So, so this moves actually, if you wanna know, this moves to the right twice, this, that's what this does, and then is scrunched by a factor of one over four. So it's kind of going like this way, to the right twice, and then crunched kind of like this. That's what the horizontal nature does. And then, but the plus three just moves that up three. And that's what my mind focuses on is that, is that this piece right here, let me just, this one right here, do that in red, right? So first it gets, I'm thinking it's reflected, then moved over and crunched, then up. This maximum point is three. So that's true, right? We're looking for something that's untrue. Now, if you don't like what I just said right there, or that maybe the explanation, the transformation is confusing, you can quickly graph this thing on a calculator. You can say negative, you go to math, number, the first choice, absolute value, of 4x minus 2, then plus 3. And then we go to zoom 6 to fit both of these things. There's our sine wave. And now we're going to see our absolute value. And you can see a little bit right here. I'll go to zoom in around the origin here. Oops, missed it there. Let me pause that. Put the window up a little bit. So if I go to my window here, my Y max is at 2.5, or I'll put it at 3.5, just so we can see. And I go to graph. You can see that they're gonna have the same maximum, but I'll also show you that you can hide, especially in a problem like this, where you have multiple functions. You can do the same thing as before, go to table or second trace. But you've got lots of functions to compare. You don't wanna keep deleting them. So what you could do, if you wanna hide the sine wave, then use it later. Go over to the equal sign. Now I'm on the equal sign. I hit enter and I unhighlight it. So now it's not gonna graph the sine wave. It's only gonna graph the absolute value. But I didn't have to delete the sine function because maybe I wanna use that in the future. So here I can go to second trace, choice four. I'm to the left of it and then to the right of it. Enter and then estimate. Enter, so you can see it says at x is about 4.9999, y is 2.9999999. Now you should just know that you'll ne if you ever get a problem with an answer like this, you can assume the answer is three, at least on the regions. You'll never get that many nines and expect them to say that's the answer instead of three. And if you're a skeptic, you can do another run of that or another run of second trace max and you'll see that, maybe I picked bad points here, but or uh, not the best points, you'll get a better approximation and maybe get three. Or in the table, you should see that the highest is three. I won't see that here because I'm on pi over four as my increment, so I just hit change that to one. And you can see that um, here's one of negative values, right? So I wanna know what the highest value is of the function. So I, I apologize, you can't see it so easily here. But in the graph, again, you go to second trace, choice four, go, I'll pick a little bit better of points. Better, I mean like tighter and even on both sides. Right in the middle there, boom. Well, it's still giving me about 2.9999. So it's, just so you know, that's three. Okay, next. F of x, h of x, and j of x all have the same, have one y-intercept. That's the answer. Now, why did I know it so quickly? Well f of x has a y-intercept, that's true, right? It has one y-intercept, it's a sine function. Sine function, unless you're constricting the domain somehow, will go on forever, but it will only cross your y-axis once, right? And uh, j of x is an absolute value function, it's two lines, it can only cross the y-axis one time, but the log function, and this is, they do this so often, that's why I recognize it immediately, they love to ask you about this. The log, unless you're translating it horizontally, does not have, does not have a y-intercept, so it doesn't have one. And let's look at why that is. If h of x is the log base two of x, think about what this means. So for this, there is no y-intercept. Any y-intercept has to have, let's draw this out, in order for there to be a point that's a y-intercept, any wherever it is, right? We don't know where the y-intercept would be necessarily, but in order for it to have a y-intercept, what has to happen? The, the x value needs to equal zero. The height, we usually call it b, could be any value there, 
but x needs to equal 0. So can x equal 0? Let's say you have h of 0. What would that even mean? Log base 2 of 0. Well, that would mean, what logarithms are telling you is that the base is 2. So 2 to some power has to equal 0. And does it ever happen? No. If you take 2 to the 0, for example, that's 1. That doesn't work. 2 to a negative, that's just a fraction, right? So there is no value, no exponent, that gets you a result of 0. So x in a logarithm function, this is essentially the exponent, right? Sorry, no, that, that's, that's the result of the exponent. And there is no way to get a result uh, that's equal to 0 with different exponents. There is no exponent that does that. So there's no way to get a point where your result is 0 because no exponent can get you there. So for all logarithm functions, it's undefined when x is 0. Again, because there's no way to get a result of 0 simply by taking a base and raising it to a power. Let's look at the other ones. OK, g of x and j of x have the same end behavior. Let me clear some of this off. OK, so you can see. So g of x is n behavior. Well, it's x cubed, right? So I know it's going to be something like a cubic. And all the x's have positive coefficients. So it's going to look, I mean, something like this. I don't really know the exact curvature, but the n behavior is what they're asking about. This direction and this direction. The exact things that are happening in between don't really matter. As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. So as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the graph goes up. As x approaches negative infinity, y also approaches negative infinity. That's the behavior of g of x. For j of x, it does have the same end behavior because wherever this absolute value function is, we know it's upside down, kind of crunched a little bit horizontally. The end behaviors are the same. Here, right? Here, on, the, on this side, of course, end behaviors are different, I should say. As x approaches positive infinity, y approaches negative infinity. That's the opposite of here. But they're saying as x approaches negative infinity. So as x approaches negative infinity, y also approaches negative infinity. And that is the same end behavior as x approaches negative infinity. But that's a true statement. We want a false statement. g of x, h of x, and j of x have rational zeros. OK. So if we look at g of x, let's start there first. The zeros are 1 half, negative 4, and 2. Those are the numbers, right? If you set this equal to 0, this equal to 0, and this equal to 0, x equals 1 half, x equals negative 4, and x equals 2. That will get you a 0. Those are the zeros of the function. Those are rational numbers. Remember that rational numbers are just fractions, a over b, uh, where both a and b are integers. And that's exactly what these are. This is 1 over 2, this is negative 4 over 1, and this is 2 over 1. And for h of x, that's true as well. Uh, when will the log function hit 0? Well, unless there's some kind of horizontal transformation, log functions hit 0 at this point, and that's the point 1, 0. That's because the base of 2 to the 0 power equals 1. This is what this is saying. The result is 1 when the power is 0. And that's true for any base and except 0 itself. Which that's a complicated case to talk about. But that's a, that's a rational number. The 0 is 1, and 1 is a rational number. j of x as well is rational. Uh, it's it's going to cross it at some fraction. right? We, so how do I know that? I know that because, well, one way I guess to know that is to graph it on a calculator and find the 0. So if we look at that, I have second trace. The second choice is 0. I could approximate these and see what I get. Enter to the right, enter, and then guess. Let's see what we get. So we get negative 0.25. That is a rational number. And I can go on the other side here as well and do that. I could also solve it algebraically. But also, um, I. Uh, I don't see any reason for this to create an irrational number in the process, but you can solve it to see that. And if you guess if you want to see that solved algebraically, I'm happy to show it where this equals zero. Set it equal to zero and then solve using what you know about absolute value. You know, in fact, let me show that, but just so you know, you don't need to do this. You can show it on a calculator. 
but here's the algebra in case that's helpful or you see a problem like that. So when does this um, equal zero? So subtract three from both sides, okay? Equals negative three. So next I'm gonna divide both sides by negative one and I get the absolute value of four x minus two equals three. And now I'm gonna solve two things. I'm gonna first say, okay, well if four x minus two is three, Right, you take the absolute value of three, you get three. Or if four x minus two is negative three, the opposite of three, the opposite, the absolute value of negative three is still three. Both of these situations will work. And if you add two on both sides for this one, you get um, four x, sorry, four x equals negative three plus two is negative one, so x is negative one fourth. If you add two to this one, you get four x equals five divided by four, x is 1.25, you can see the rational number answers there. So when you're dealing with absolute value, let's just backtrack, get the absolute value all by itself, like you did right here, and then split it up so that you have the term inside the absolute value equals whatever number you have here as it is, or it's opposite. Because in both cases, if you take the absolute value of three in this case, or the absolute value of negative three, remember absolute value is distance from zero, you get a result of three. So you wanna consider the case and its opposite. All right, hope that helped.